Hello again, everybody. Great to have you along for yet another edition of Journey Through Sports and Life. We've had some uh, some incredible individuals on the show in uh, recent weeks and delighted to uh, really get excited about what's coming up today. Oh, I'm yeah. Scott Murray alongside Marjorie Herrera-Lewis. And out there in Zoom Zoom land <laughs> is Marty Schneider. I'm sorry that I'm not with you guys. I was, you know, I was in uh, Canton, Ohio for the weekend. So I, uh, you know, the turnaround to make it to be in the studio with you was a little tight, but we have a great guest today. And uh, his dad was a former Philadelphia Eagle, also an L.A. Ram. And uh, so Roman Gabriel Jr. is our guest. And I'm really excited to share him with our audience. He's been a great friend. And his dad was an incredible football player for the Philadelphia Eagles. Oh, he had a great career. Yeah, he really did. Started off with the L.A. Rams in 1962. And then, as they say, the rest is history. Oh, absolutely. And uh, then on to the Philadelphia Eagles. So went from West Coast to East Coast. But... An iconic name and an iconic individual. Yeah. And I, uh, just I, recently had a birthday, 82 years 82. old. It's kind of hard to believe. It was 60 years ago this year, back in 1962, that he was the uh, the second round draft pick, not second round, first uh, first round draft pick, the second pick overall. Right. Isn't that something yes. in the NFL? Mm-hmm. So we're excited about uh, your special guest that you brought to us. Yeah, and I'm also know, looking I'm forward you know, to to what Roman sorry, has to. Marjorie? I'm also looking forward to what Roman might have to say about the work that he's done with his foundation. Yes, yes, yes. He really uh, is, so many players, as Margie mentions, you see what they do on the field, and then they kind of disappear. Here's a guy that you know learned from his dad, and then continued on, and what he's done off the field for young people is above and beyond. Oh, it, it's been incredible. Well, what I think a lot of that has to do with also is the fact that. Great coaches really inspire their players right. to not only do amazing work on the field, but off the field. So whether it was mm-hmm. George Allen or whether it was, you know, Tom Landry or Dick Vermeil, it seems like there's a, a pattern of really inspired coaches really definitely inspire their players to go out and make a positive difference and be impactful. And Roman Gabriel certainly did a tremendous amount off the field, you know, well, We'll hopefully get a chance to talk about his involvement with the Ronald McDonald House and Eagles Fly for Leukemia. And definitely Roman picked up that ball and has been running with it uh, just like his dad did. So that's it for uh, for this edition of uh, Journey Through Sports and Life. We have got the man himself coming up right after we take a quick break. But in the meantime, great to have you along. Hope you're having a great summer. Marnie and Marjorie and yours truly, Scott Murray, don't you go away. Welcome back as we continue on with this edition of Journey Through Sports and Life. Roman Gabriel Jr. is our special guest today. How oh, about I'm, that, Marjorie? I'm excited. I want Me to hear too. what he has to say. Oh, I think it's outstanding. <laughs> Marty, why don't you bring us up to date? Because this is your specific guest, even though we all certainly know who Roman Gabriel was and who Roman Gabriel Jr. certainly is. Well, thank you. Roman is a dear friend of mine, and his dad played football for the among other teams, but certainly for the Philadelphia Eagles when my grandfather, Leonard Toes, owned the Philadelphia Eagles. And when our favorite uh, coach, Coach Dick Vermeil, the newest member of the Pro Football Hall right. of Fame, was coaching the Philadelphia Eagles. So Roman is a great ambassador of the NFL, a great ambassador for his dad, and certainly uh, has picked up the ball and literally run with it, although not a fumble, but picked up the ball <laughs> from the center and uh, is running with it and creating his own legacy. So Roman, it's always great to hear your stories, and I'm so excited to share your stories with uh, Marjorie and Scott and our audience. Well, I tell you what, I'm old enough to remember Roman Gabriel, his dad. And so, uh, gosh, he spent, what, I think 11 years with the L.A. Rams and then went, went East Coast and, right. uh, as you said, joined the Philadelphia Eagles. For five more years, That's I believe. right, yeah. yeah. Talk about mm-hmm. a, a great career. 16, 16 years in the National Football League. Doesn't get much better than that, especially at the quarterback position. So very, very, very impressive. So, Roman, we welcome you. Great to have you along. Thank you. Thank you for the indict, Marnie. It was great seeing you this weekend. We had a great time in Canton, and uh, it was so cool to be around. For me, it was incredible because, you know, I played with, you know, came out in 82 with the Raiders. They were there with Cliff Branch. I threw balls to Cliff Branch, so that was really cool. And then, of course, Coach uh, with the Rams. I met him for the first time when I was nine, when he was the special teams coach of the Rams. And uh, then, you know, again, you know, reunited with my father in Philadelphia, uh, so this was a special weekend, and Marnie, it was great to see you and so many of our friends and everybody together having a great time. And really, really, I'll never forget it. It was a special, special weekend. 
Uh, let me it ask really you this. Was. Football really is family, Roman. Like we talk about that. It really is. Nothing else like it. Faith, family, and football. That was a lot That's of guys. Right. Bryant Young said that at the beginning of his speech for the Niners. So I, I, I always enjoy hearing that. And uh, two, two of my most favorite inductions was 2016 with my friend Coach Tunji. Uh, when he when he came into the hall and then Coach Vermeil, so the, both those guys to, are, are two of my all time favorite people. So it's great to be back at the Hall of Fame every year and to see so many friends. You know, it's funny you say that, Roman Tony Dungy, of course, uh, one of the great coaches, and Dick Vermeil. But the point that you make is they're just good guys. In unfortunately, in this world of sports, there's a lot of great athletes, really some incredible iconic athletes, and yet they're not iconic individuals. Is is when they came off that field, they are not the kind of people you want to hang around with. And you just mentioned two really strong ones, and of course, Dick Vermeil finally getting in this year. I was I was delighted to see him go in at, at Canton this year. Oh yeah, wasn't that something so deserving oh, and far over so. long overdue? Yeah, long overdue, mm-hmm. long overdue. So how did he, Dick Vermeil? Uh, how would you even say he uh, changed your father's life, your life? What makes him so special in your uh, your family? You know, through the years. Marty said it. Um, Coach has got the right priorities about everything he does. Um, that's the way I live my life, my wife and I, and, and that's the way our ministry, our radio show, and all the things that we do are all about three words: faith, family, and football. Um, and for anybody out there listening, it could be faith, family, and whatever you have a passion for. But when those things are in order, uh, your life's gonna gonna go pretty well. Um, uh, one of the things about Coach that I've always appreciated is is no matter what uh, our family has gone through, no matter what my dad went through in his career and the ups and downs, he's always been there for us. Always been there for him. Um, my dad's had health problems here over the last ten years, so. Uh, I've kind of represented him at the Hall of Fame. You know, I love uh, ever, a lot of people want to see my dad get in. Uh, and Coach Vermeil's just been a champion uh, as a friend, somebody who has been there for me almost like a second father. Oh, wow. uh, and over the past years, as, as he has, uh, we always got together, you know, at the Super Bowl and, and in Canton. And, um, you know, I told him uh, about two years ago, I said, Coach, you deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. He said, well, I never really thought about it or think about it. You know, I said, you're putting in all these players, but, you know, your career has been stellar. And I'm so glad that, um, um, you know, Sal Palantonio from ESPN and so many others went to bat for him because it's hard to get in the Hall of Fame today. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah it is really sure is. difficult. So a lot of politics involved, but coach never burned bridges. He's always been somebody that's been respected across the board by players, coaches, by the league, by his family and friends. Um, they don't have a criteria really for the hall of fame, but if you were going to make a criteria, coach Dick Vermeil would be the criteria. Uh, when you talk about what he accomplished on the football field, that's great. But a hall of famer should be somebody that's a hall of famer to his family, a hall of famer to his friends, hall of famer to his kids and a Hall of Famer to the people that look up to him. Um, so he's been a, a, an incredible role model. He's one of the sweetest men you'll ever meet in your life, and he has the character that is why you play football. Um, I would have loved to have played for him. Um, you know, people like him are what make the NFL what it is. And, you know, Tony Dungy told me one time, he said, you know, uh, the press has a tendency to put the attention on those that do it wrong. Um, but 95% of NFL players and coaches do it right. And I can attest to that by over 30 years of interviewing NFL players and coaches. Uh, our show is about faith, family, uh, and football. So we talk about behind the scenes. We talk about what their passions are. We talk about family. Those things that you heard in speeches yesterday. Um, and by the way, Bryant Young's speech for the Niners yesterday by far is the greatest, one of the uh, top five speeches of the Hall of Fame I have ever heard. Mm -hmm. Um, What an incredible story. And then Leroy Butler, same thing. Cliff Branch's wife. The things you hear at the Hall of Fame really gets fans in tune because they're talking about faith, family, football, and able to really tell people what life's about for them. So um, that's what makes the Pro Football Hall of Fame so cool. Uh, and coach gave a great speech. And, you know, people around me were going, well, he's just thanking people. And I said, that's who he is. He, he was not going to take credit yeah. for himself. He, he never did. Thank does. A lot. Two minutes. He I did know. thank a lot he of people. Him. Yeah, it was yeah. awesome. There was going to be no hook, right? I mean, he was going to get them all in. And the thing, I don't know about you, Marty, but when, 
when he, the other night when he called all of his high school teammates, his high school team, there was about 10 of them. They were all 75 and above. Uh And you'd have thought they were NFL team. They walked up there. I've never seen anything like it. So uh, to have all those people, over 300 people at that party the other night, people that went all the way back to junior high, and then to all the teams that he coached in the NFL, for all those guys to take time and their families to come tells you who Coach Vermeil is. Let me ask you this, uh, Roman. Uh, you, you've talked about all the great men in, in in football, on and off the field. You've talked about coaches. You've talked about referred to some players and what have you. But I just wondered, let's go back in time. The name of this program is Journey Through Sports and Life, and I've just been given a two-minute cue, so I don't know as we're going to have time for this. Uh, so I tell you what, let's let's just do this. If you in one minute, and then we'll come back, and you can go into a little more detail. But I just wondered, what are there three or four things that set your dad aside from all the rest of the dads that you know in this world, and maybe how you became a dad? Uh, in in just again in in forty five or, or uh, fifty seconds, and then we'll uh, we'll, well hear I, some more. I give you know my, my parents divorced when I when I was nine, so um, my mother uh, was the person who you know was mom and dad for a while there because my dad was living in Philly, so I didn't you know I didn't live there. I lived in Los Angeles, so right. I didn't get a chance to see my dad a lot when he was in Philadelphia, except in the summers when he would come back. Um, but I can say that my mom taught me the uh, the love of people sensitivity. You know, being a man is also showing your feelings. But my father showed me what uh, hard work is, dedication, commitment, um, doing everything at the highest level, um, and no excuses, sacrifice, and what it took to be a, a, not only a great player, but I took those assets that he taught me in having an opportunity to play quarterback in pro football myself and. I I took those things and I applied them to the other areas of my life, to my Christian life, um, which I am a strong Christian and love God. That's why I love people who are about faith, family, and football. Uh, And I also took those traits in all the work that I've done. Um, He was a guy that persevered. He was a guy that didn't take no for an answer. He was a guy that no matter what the circumstances was always going to be dependable when it came to his teammates and his coaches. So coach and him are very very um the same in their mentality they're triple type a's coach comes across as real relaxed now but he was a triple type a you know coach he he expected a ton uh george allen was his mentor and so my dad learned from both uh about what it takes and that's why they got along so well because they were they were 100 percent in Uh, and if you weren't 100 percent in including me my dad told me i'm not letting you play football unless that's the way you're going to play it so (laughs) right um, i give him credit for that well that's a great answer great answer roman roman gabriel jr is our special guest and we're going to be back with more of this edition of journey through sports and life right after this brief timeout Welcome back as we continue on with this edition of Journey Through Sports and Life. Scott Murray along with Marnie and Marjorie and our special guest today, Roman Gabriel Jr. And you know, I tell you what, as I think back in time, I was just a kid at the time, but Roman Gabriel, wow, North oh. Carolina State, was he something else? All America, I mean, this this guy was above and beyond. And now, he, that was before my time, but yeah, I do I remember reading about it. Well, I tell you, it was 1962. <laughs> We're talking 60 years ago, exactly this year. And yeah. he, Roman was the guy that was picked as the is the top quarterback and he was the number 2 pick overall in the NFL you know who number 1 was Ernie Davis. Right. Ernie Davis had won the Heisman Trophy in 1961, mm-hmm. the first African American mm-hmm. to do so out of Syracuse. Right. And my mother's family, they, they were from, all from uh, Rochester. So I knew a kid that played out of Syracuse. Wow, this guy was something. Then he was picked. Uh, he was picked up by the uh, the, the Redskins. Right. Traded and, and right away. Ra- traded right away to the mm-hmm. Cleveland Browns, and then about six months later, got leukemia, yeah. and he died at the age of 23 and never played it down in the NFL. Yeah. And the guy that was right there and I think was number one in the AFL pick back, you know, you, when the a, this was before the Super Bowl and before right. the AFL and the NFL and the AFC and the NFC and all that. But that was Roman Gabriel, Roman Gabriel. and who's our special mm-hmm. guest. And I know we had talked about playing off of, of, of the, you know, African-American and what have you. Why don't yeah. you pick it up and... and yeah, we, we have had some other guests on the show before who uh, African-American uh, men who were breaking barriers in the NFL. And your father, certainly as a, a Filipino man, uh, probably broke some barriers as well. So could you talk a little bit about 
what he might have gone through and what he experienced as he was breaking barriers at that time in the early 60s? Well, you know, a lot of people didn't think he was Filipino because he was so tall. Most Filipinos aren't tall. His father was about 5'8". Oh, wow. Uh, and, and he was about 5'5", five, five, right? 6'5"? Uh, six, five? So six, five? My grand, Yeah, my dad's 6'3". Six, six, um, I'm actually 6'6". Six, six. I got a brother who's 6'6". Six, six, so, um, you know, it's actually my grandmother who was um, Irish who was 6'1". Oh, so wow. So he wow. got his size from um, my grandma's side of the family. But um, my dad gives his father a lot of credit because, you know, he got on a boat came over from, you know, like many, many uh, came over at that time uh, and started a life here. Uh, he was a cook on the railroad. Uh, my father-in-law actually worked with him on the railroad in North Carolina. Um, he was a, he, he, he was a conductor. Um, so, you know, it, it's a small world. Uh, but my father, you know, really a lot of people thought he was an Indian because he did a movie with John Wayne called the undefeated, oh, yeah. um, That's right. which was, which was uh, back in 1969, which worked in conjunction with the Rams going undefeated that, you know, for the first 11 games of that 69 season. So mm-hmm. whenever I see a lot of people, they think he's Indian. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so or native American. So um, I tell them, no, no, he's Filipino. And people are shocked by that because he's so tall. Uh, but, you know, one of the reasons why I think, you know, he would be a lot of people want to see him get in the Hall of Fame is that was one of them is that he still is today uh, the only Phil- Filipino quarterback, you know, in NFL history. Wow. Um, the only other guy I know that played a little bit of football with Florida State, played at Florida State and then played a little in the pros is my friend Chris Ricks, who was also Filipino as well. So, um, you know, it's really cool to. Uh, that so many um, players have broken through in so many different ways in the NFL. Um, I, you know, I was there for Coach Junji's victory in 2006 when he became the first African-American coach to win the Super Bowl. So there's uh, the one thing I love about the NFL, though, and about playing, you know, football is I've never been on a team where, where um, background, color, you know, who you were or what your nationality was or your religion or whatever was a problem mm-hmm. in any way, shape or form in a locker room. So um, football is kind of that thing that takes all that stuff and kind of throws it out the window and everybody's in it for each other to win. How about fans? Um, were they uh, were they pretty embracing uh, when he was starting out or, or was this? Yeah, something? yeah, it really it wasn't the same as being African-American, uh, what African-Americans went through to break through. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so it, for, for him, his heritage is really means something to him because of his father. Yeah. Um, but he never really made anything of that. Like a lot of things get made of today. Um, you know, he just wanted to play football. So mm-hmm. um, now people talk about like, hey, you know, with his great numbers and the great career that he had, um, that certainly, you know, if you're looking at the Hall of Fame would be one thing you look at. Um, Jim Plunkett, yeah. you know, same thing, Yeah. Um, you know, as as a Native American. Um, I think Jim deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. He's won two Super Bowls with the Raiders. and. Right. Uh, of course, Marnie's good friend, Rod Martin, who ruined uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. Oh, yeah, you know, she's talked about that. Game game. So Jim <laughs> helped do that. So what was funny was is that the Raiders were involved with this thing with the Eagles all week long. And, of course, you're mentioning that Super Bowl going both ways. And one side with the green hates it and the other side with the Raiders loves it. So mm-hmm. um, Marnie knows all about that. But somehow she's mended fences with the Raiders with uh, – <laughs> and with the Cowboys, you know, she's yeah. doing a good well, job. You know, when I first met him, you know, it had been like 30 something years where he was my personal boogeyman at age, you know, 12. <laughs> I was like, if I ever meet that guy, you know, and that lasted for decades. And I would wake up in a in a night sweat and like have a prepared speech ready for Rod Martin. And then finally, in January of 2017, I I I had an opportunity to, to meet Rod Martin and, um, you know, it was a kind of a funny story. We were at the, uh, the collegiate, uh, let's see the NFL, NFL PA collegiate bowl. And I noticed this guy. And then I realized as I like kind of spend more time looking at him, I'm like, oh, it's Rod Martin. And I, you know, for 
like I said, for decades, he was my personal boogeyman. And I went up to him and I said, my grandfather's Leonard Toes. And he looked at me and he was like, bring it in, baby girl. <laughs> and I just cried on his shoulder for, for, you know, 15 minutes. And then he joked with me and said he was Ron Jaworski's third leading receiver <laughs> in Super Bowl 15, which well, was we not. Saw, well, we saw Ron the other <laughs> no. night. I know, I know he doesn't like to think about that at all. So yeah. no, but, um, you know, but he has a great story, which is really what our show is about. Like this great story through journey, journey through life and sports. And so once you shared with me his story and he's one of 12 and it was the last round, last round draft pick and the draft and whatever, I was like, all right, I, I like your story. I don't like what you did to us in 1981, but I like your story. So we'll be friends. Yeah. And now I cheer for him. I don't want his record to be broken because, you know, there is some sort of connection to the old days, knowing that Rod's record from Super Bowl 15. I don't think that one's going to be broken. Probably not. Yeah. So, you know, I, I get they, they do talk about it, that how in every Super Bowl they mention that Rod Martin broke the Super Bowl record in Super Bowl 15. So oh, Ron, yeah. Ron Jaworski can take, take credit for making his career. So. Yeah. Way, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I have That's a question right. though, Roman. You mentioned your father um in, in the movie with John Wayne. I'm from the uh, Gilligan's Island generation. Now, did he ever talk no. about what it was like being on Gilligan's Island? You know, Joe Namath and my dad were really kind of barrier breakers in the NFL in another way. Um back then most players didn't make enough money. To, you know, it wasn't year round. They would work in the off season. Yeah. My dad and Joe Nabel were two of very few players that made enough money that they didn't have to work another job in the off season. So they worked around it full time. But the two of them were probably the most famous stars in the NFL at that time. Of oh course, yeah, definitely. Joe was in New York. My father was in Los Angeles, and he got a, he got so many incredible opportunities to be on television shows, to be in movies. Um, to um, and of course, all those Hollywood people were regulars at the at the Coliseum. I mean, yeah. you know, everybody from Michael Douglas to you know Bill Cosby to you know uh, Anne Margaret, uh, Rock Hudson. You know, just go down the. Uh, we, uh, so Clint Eastwood used to come to our golf tournaments and hang out. Oh, so wow. you know, he was he was the cat's meow back then. And the Rams were the show, uh, and so you know now these guys get all these big deals. Those two guys is really two of the guys who really started that thing in terms of getting big money off the field or opportunities off the field. Yeah, Interesting. That's a good Interesting. point. Interesting. Yeah. It's a very good mm-hmm. point. You talk about quarterbacks and what they did, and they had to do things off the field. Look at 63, the year after Roman was was drafted, uh-huh. Roger Staubach. Heisman Trophy winner out of the Naval, <clears throat> excuse me, the Naval Academy, yeah. but he couldn't play with the Cowboys. He had to go off and serve in, you know, right. Vietnam and what have you, and didn't come to the Cowboys until what, 68, 69. Right. Mm-hmm. And and so consequently, and then what did he have to do in the offseason? He's got five kids. He got into the real estate business with Henry S. Miller. Yeah. And now today, without sharing, I, I think this is a public figure, but I mean, he sold his his company, his real estate company, to, uh, you know, to uh, Jones Lang LaSalle. And, uh, and, and holy cow. You a lot more money in real estate, that's for sure. Oh, that's yeah, right. Definitely. Well, and that's exactly where I was going with this. Mm-hmm. You're absolutely right, Roman. He has made more money and mm-hmm. is the richest quarterback in the history of the NFL. Wow. But it's not mm-hmm. because he's a player. Right. And doesn't stack up, <clears throat> stack up against some of the players that are playing now. Yeah. But he made all his money in real estate, yeah. or the majority well, of it. And the players, to, the players today need to be very thankful to that group of men. You are absolutely oh, right. That, absolutely, that set yes. the tone for yep. the kind of money that they could make today, and fighting for free ag- free agency back then, which now players have the right and ability to move around. Now they're getting guaranteed contracts. That wasn't true when 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 my dad played, and yeah. it was a totally different game. But um. I'm, I'm more of a fan of the golden years of the 60s, 70s. There were some of the greatest players to ever play, and um, that's what the Hall of Fame is so cool, is that you get a chance to see guys that you played with, guys that played with your father, guys that guys that are playing now. Um, many of the guys, like Bryant Young and Steve Young and Troy Aikman and Emmitt Smith, were guys that I covered when, you know, playing uh, in the NFL when they were just, you know, trying to prove themselves. Right. So mm-hmm. to right. see it come all for, full circle at the Hall of Fame and um, to have been around the game in the NFL for, in this case, since I can't remember when I was. And I mean, the bottom line is, is I, I that's the only thing I knew. When people ask me all the time, they say, 
what made you think you could play pro football like your father? I said, well, I didn't know any different. My dad played 17 <laughs> years. I didn't know that other players didn't do that. Right. I'm like nine right. years old going, I want to play pro football just like that. That's yeah, what I want to do. That's what comes next. Yeah, um, absolutely. So I, was, I guess I was ignorant and dumb enough to think that I could do it because I really didn't think about the fact that they played for 2.7 years on average. So um, I, I was born into this. My dad, when I was born, you know, he was a sophomore in college, my mom and dad. So he was playing in NC State. Mm-hmm. And we moved to California when I was two. Yeah. Uh, so it, it was it was a, it was a very interesting life. Um, a lot of incredible things, a lot of negatives too, because you know my dad kind of belonged to the public, and he really believed that he owed it to his fans. So I, I watched my dad come play a football game and stand an hour outside of every home game until he signed every autograph before right. he left the stadium. Yeah. That's unheard of today. Yeah, it sure is. We've got to take another break. Roman Gabriel Jr., our special guest on this edition of Journey Through Sports and Life. Don't you go away. Once again, we welcome you back to this edition of Journey Through Sports and Life. One of the greats when you talk about quarterbacks in the history of the NFL, Roman Gabriel from both the L.A. Rams and the Philadelphia Eagles back in the, uh, the 60s and 70s, an uh, incredible career, and alongside is his son, who also has really set a tone and, and really made a difference in the world of uh, not only football, but maybe more importantly, the young people, our future, and some, uh, some great stuff, Marnie, that I'm sure he'd like to share with us. I'll give it to you. Well, yeah, Roman, you know, your dad was very instrumental in helping out with Eagles Fly for Leukemia, which then turned into the very first Ronald McDonald house. And so I know that that's something that we're all really proud of and very passionate about in Philadelphia and beyond. So I think that your dad was an incredible leader on the field, but certainly off the field and educated you not only in how to play football and how to be a great man on a professional football field, but also taking it farther and doing things to give back to the community. So can you, uh, I know you do so many things to make a difference. Um, What would you say, you know, is your uh, kind of is, let's see, is your first round pick of, you know, giving back to the community? How, you know, how can people find you? What can we do to be involved in what you're doing? Well, Marty, what you said about my dad is true. Um, I had the chance to experience seeing that in action. I mean, with Fly for Leukemia, I, I remember being at so many of those golf tournaments and all the money that was raised. Um, I also remember my dad took me to military bases. Uh, where they did a lot of cool stuff. And I have learned to respect for our country and for our military men. So, um, you know, I definitely saw what a platform is. Um, you know, uh, Coach Vermeil and Tony Dungy talk a lot about platform, not only as an af- athlete, but in your life. Um, and what I see a platform is, is are you impacting the people you can impact around you? Uh, Cause people are always watching and it doesn't matter. You don't have to be a superstar athlete or an entertainer. All of us uh, have an opportunity to impact others around us positively. So uh, my wife and I in 2003 started the sold out youth foundation. And our goal uh, uh, was to not only help young people to reach their dreams and goals and equip them to be successful, uh, but we got involved in a 100% drug and alcohol abstinence um, campaign and approach. Um, so I'm, we're very probably more proud of that than anything I've ever accomplished in my life. Uh, besides my relationship with God and playing playing football, um, this this really is uh, my passion, my wife's passion. And um, we have an online program that's available at soldouttv.com. That's soldouttv.com. That's an online platform that's interactive. And post COVID, our company took off because we were an assembly program in schools, but we couldn't go into schools. So we worked with several schools. We've done this program in five states and growing as we speak. And, you know, we have, we have almost 40% of 13 to 17 year old kids that are experiencing some sort of mental and emotional distress because of COVID. Um, and a big part of that, I mean, it was a problem before, but it just exasperated it. We have a 25% increase in suicide in high school students. Fentanyl is the number one killer for 13 to 17 year olds. So um, we have a serious crisis in our country. And our program addresses that by going into public and private schools and bringing a full go mental and emotional wellness and fitness and health and wellness curriculum, as well as a 100% uh, online um, absence program where kids can take their phone, 
go to a QR code in high traffic areas in their school, which takes them right to our site where they take a three step accountable pledge, which includes having the conversation with their parents about drugs and alcohol, which parents, we, we've got to be vigilant about our kids' mental and emotional wellness. And we got to see the signs of drug, drug and alcohol use. And um, we are, we are really in the danger zone. Schools are reaching out to our organization right now because they're not equipped with any mental or emotional wellness. So what I did was, is we started a health and wellness page on our soldouttv.com site. And we brought experts in, many who Marnie knows, um, who work in the NFL as psychologists, mental success coaches, neurologists, um, sports specific coaches, nutritionalists, financial literacy coaches. So we brought a curriculum that we could provide for health classes in the schools where they could teach kids real tools before they hit the red zone. And what we call the red zone is when kids get to the point where they lose hope and where they actually take their life uh, and where uh, they start doing drugs and alcohol. So um, ours is a preventative program. We've seen thousands and thousands of kids take this pledge. Um, this year, um, we're starting a new program with a college accredited curriculum um, where kids can get credit for college through wow. taking our programs. Um, so um, I'm very proud to provide this program. And I can say that um, guys like Patrick Mahomes, um, Tom Brady, Tony Dungy, Coach Vermeil, um, so many of our um, coaches and players have spoken into our program to speak to kids. Um, you see on my left on the screen, Lisa Leslie, um, it's called the Student Success 101 program. We have over 400 videos, one to three minutes about character and life skills and about drug and alcohol absence from famous uh, drug and alcohol abstinent athletes, coaches, and entertainers that speak to our kids through their mobile phones. Um, it's the way kids like to communicate visually. Um, our health and wellness program right now is making paying dividends for kids. So um, we're getting ready to launch a national app. And Marty, of course, you're invited um, to our Super Bowl party again this year in Phoenix on Friday, February 10th, called um, Leaders and Legends. Um, and if you want to get involved with the Super Bowl party, there's, um, it's basically a celebration of innovation and technology of how we can help the next generation of kids. We'll have a panel with um, athletes, coaches, and other famous people that will be there. Um, if you want to get involved, go to soldouttv.com, the website. Just click on events, and we'd love to have you as our guest at the Super Bowl. We're going to do a Super Bowl initiative in Phoenix this year. I'll be in schools early in the week. We'll have a football camp at Legacy Sports, which I have the hat on. Uh, which is the world's largest youth sports facility that we partner with. Our, my program is the official drug and alcohol abstinence program. Over 2.1 million people have gone through legacy sports. So they're going to be involved at the Super Bowl with us. I'll be doing my Roman Gabriel show at romangabrielshow.com live from Wednesday to Friday morning. we got to have you come down and be a guest on that. Uh, and Definitely. then we'll gonna, do some readings. Yeah, we're, we're, that's right. You need to bring you need to bring those. We need to set up a table. That's right. So we can get people your book and stuff. That would be great. And then Saturday morning, we're doing a faith, family and football event at a local church where people like Tony Dungy, Patrick Mahomes uh, and others like that will give their testimonies. And then we will um, invite people to uh, a faith, family and football experience um, for their families and kids. You know, um, so we've got a great week planned. Um, that's what we've tried to do is connect um, through the Super Bowl so we can have a full go uh, relationship in those cities, helping kids in public and private schools. So if you want to help us, you want to get involved as a parent or you want to get your kids involved in our program or if you're involved with a school that wants us to come out. Go to soldouttv.com. It's all there on your phone, iPad, or your computer. So we're, we're really excited about the opportunity we have to invest in the next generation of leaders. And Roman, I know when you said that you were going to invite Marnie, you certainly were going to invite Scott and Marjorie as <laughs> oh, yeah. well, right? Well, if you guys can come to Phoenix. <laughs> well, okay. I'll, actually, I'll be there. I, I actually will be. Uh, I used the, the, the uh, uh, um, I'm tired, Taste of the NFL. The big event that they used to have the night oh, yeah. before the uh, IMC. It's a great event, too, for yeah. feeding the hungry. You know, one IMC. thing people don't realize about yeah. the Super Bowl yeah. is that the game is just the game. It's the real part of the Super Bowl that's the difference maker that players and coaches love is Monday through Saturday. There yeah. are hundreds and hundreds of events where NFL players past and front, present are giving back to the next generation of kids, to feeding the hungry, to bringing awareness to illness to cancer, to leukemia. Bottom line is the Super Bowl week is the most powerful week 
of the year to influence. Uh, and of course, with all the media there, you have a chance to get on your platform. So many players love coming to my show, the Roman Gabriel show, because it is faith family sports. They want to talk about their passion. They want to talk about what gets them excited. Um, and, you know, I, I've just, we consider ourselves a ministry and our ministry has been to minister to coaches and players and to give them the opportunity to speak about what means the most to them. So we're really uh, blessed by God to be involved in full-time ministry and have been involved with the NFL since, you know, 1994. So, well, I emceed the, the taste of the NFL for umpteen years and then wrote a book, Bring Out the Best. And it was all about all the people that came together yeah. and did that. Yeah. So, And I will be in uh, in Phoenix again this year. We've got that uh, a couple other things that we're right. working on, too. So, yes, yeah, so I'll be so there, Marjorie too. So Marjorie and I, so... all three of us will be there. So look <laughs> out, the trifecta, trifecta <laughs> coming your right. way. Well, this is going to be, we've been doing the Super Bowl since 94. This is going to be our biggest year ever. Oh, awesome. Wow. Uh, Great. We, awesome. we really mm-hmm. want to do a powerful youth initiative all week. And I've got so many, you know, Marnie knows a lot of the teammates and players that are coming to help us. And that's what I love about the, the league is, you know, it really is a small family. Same thing with the Hall of Fame. Um, guys want to help each other. You know, we're all in it for the same thing, to use our platforms to make a difference in people's lives. And um, I can say that I'm proud to know thousands of um, athletes and coaches that, are out there making a difference and many of them who don't even care about getting any credit. They just want to do it. Um, so this is the NFL that very few people see. Mm-hmm. And I've been really blessed to get to see it my whole life. And it started with the work my dad did that showed me as a kid that, um, and we try to tell this to our kids in our program, success has two things. Number one, success is about going after what you want and sacrificing to get it, whatever you need to do. The second thing is, is um, success doesn't mean much if it's all about you. Um, success means that you're going to use that success and platform to help someone else up to be successful. So I know Marnie's doing that with her books and getting families involved. And, you know, we all have a, a role to play and we all have our gifts and abilities. But I, what I love is I've worked with so many great guys over the years that all of us have helped each other. And it's just made us a more powerful witness to kids, more powerful opportunity to influence and um, you know, I, I can truly say that this weekend um, we saw in Coach Vermeil what it means to impact hundreds of thousands of people's lives, not as a football coach and as a Super Bowl champion, but Coach Vermeil, I can't tell you, not, I mean, not just players, communities, people. He, he loves everyone, and I can truly say that guys like him and Tony Dunger are those kind of people that it doesn't matter who they're talking to, what their background is, who they are. They treat people the same way with respect mm-hmm. and love and people. That's why they love them. That's why so, they respect Roman, them so much because they don't care about who they are. It's about what they can do for others. Yeah, a lot of people come to their foundations through some kind of experience. What, what made you develop this kind of passion for for youth i mean you've talked mine's a lot easy. about faith um, family mine, mine's easy um yeah we got about uh, we got about one minute uh if you can wrap that yeah, up in one yeah. minute it, it's real simple um my family has alcoholism in it it's genetic i had a grandmother who died of alcohol related uh, another grand grandfather um my father struggled with pain killers and alcohol like many players did back then who was trying to deal with pain mm-hmm. Um, my youngest brother, uh, he's my younger brother, uh, one year removed from me, um, started drinking when he was a freshman in high school and, uh, then spent the next 17 years as a closet alcoholic. Uh And, uh, I was the one to find him at age 32 to check him into a rehabilitation center, take care of him in my home for a year. Um, now my brother's doing great. He hadn't had drinks since 88. He has a great job, but I saw it ruin so many of my high school, college and professional friends' lives. And Marnie knows this too. That's one of the drawbacks of professional sports is, is, uh, you know, alcohol and drugs are available. And when you're injured or you have problems, it's easy to get into that lifestyle. And mm-hmm. so many of my friends have, uh, have, have dealt with that. And that's what we try to tell our kids that if you want your dreams and goals, the fastest way to disqualify from that is to get involved with drugs and alcohol. So yes, it's personal to me. It's a passion. What I do, it's not about the, uh, a job. It's yeah. about knowing that once kids get involved with it, the rest of their life, they're going to struggle with it. 50% of alcoholics and, and addicts end up checking back into rehab. It's, just, yeah. it's, a, it's a terrible thing that we have in our country. It's a crisis. We're not taking it seriously. And uh, 
Parents, I just need to tell you, please be vigilant with your kids. Please pay attention to their mental and emotional wellness. Please have that talk about drugs and alcohol because your kids, even the best kids, make poor decisions. Yep. So Great as information. parents, we want to be there and we want to do everything we can to keep them from getting in trouble. So Great that's, information. That's, yep. my, that's my heart. And my yep. I hear Thank you. you we've got yeah, to like quit. We've got to take a like, quit. No Marnie, gonna say. Marnie, we got to take I a quit. I was so drunk, I made the best choices. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no one's ever gonna say that. We got to take right. a break. We're back with more right after this. Welcome back as we head down the home stretch. This edition of Journey Through Sports and Life, and I don't know about you, but uh, this has been most informative, most oh, informational, yes, and touching the heart in so many ways. Roman, you have been above and beyond, Roman Gabriel Jr. And I want you uh, to tell everybody in our audience about what you do in your website, so people that have uh, been touched by some of the things that you've shared with us, they can go and check it out. Well, I just want to make it clear, parents, that you have an opportunity to give your kids a tool that can change their lives. Please send them to soldouttv.com. You're looking behind me. Our motto is educate, encourage, challenge. We want to give kids the success principles they need to be successful, and we want to make sure that drugs and alcohol aren't a part of their success plan. So please go there. Take a look at it for yourself. We have a lot of educational tools for parents on our Facebook page. Uh, at uh, sold out students for parents only and then twitter and instagram sold out 41 twitter sold out students instagram and our website all that stuff's there at sold out tv.com so kids students if you want to see some really cool people that care about you and going to talk to you about things that you can do to give yourself every chance to success please do it and um i just want to tell you guys how much thankful i am to come on the show marnie thanks for the invite i love marnie uh, because she is doing She's using her talents and abilities to influence kids' lives and to make a difference Definitely. out there, you know, with her with her uh, children's books and using the NFL as a platform to reach a lot of kids and give them enjoyment and education as well. So um, I just thank you guys for having us, and we're so appreciative to uh, to be involved uh, in the NFL in all these years to have a difference and to make a difference in people's lives. So uh, soldouttv.com, check it out, and you can get hold of me. Um, I'll answer you within 24 hours, your students, or if you have a question for me, just do it on our pledge page at the uh, student pledge at soldouttv.com. Well, I tell you what, Roman, uh, I, uh, in all my, when I'm traveling around the country with my Leadership America uh, keynote, I always say, live your life as a go-getter, but share your life as a go-giver. And you and mm -hmm. your wife have obviously continued to do that day in and day out. So Absolutely. I know I'm saying thank you. I'm saying thank you to Marnie for bringing us up to date on all that you've been doing. As I said, I was a fan of your dad when I was just a kid. But yeah. to see what you have done, would you not agree, Marjorie? Oh, absolutely. This yeah. is wonderful. Yeah, this has just been great. So we can't thank you enough. Continued success. And we look forward to seeing you in uh, in Phoenix at the Super Bowl. That's and right. We'll be Phoenix, there. February 10th, go to soldouttv.com, click on events. Anybody can RSV and come. We need sponsors as well. So go to the page. It's all there. We hope to see you for what's going to be a great Super Bowl this year. All right. Roman Gabriel Jr., our thanks, our thanks, our thanks. Until next time for Journey Through Sports and Life, I'm Scott Murray. Marjorie Herrera-Lewis. And Marnie Schneider. Stay safe, stay well, and make a difference in the world, especially with those children in your life, as, uh, as Roman has just shared with us all. Till next time, so long, everybody.